Good morning, everybody. You're watching Morning Rush, 8.30 here on the East Coast. Our top story, tensions between the U.S. and Israel still running high, but Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has apparently changed his mind about sending a high-level delegation to the U.S. So earlier this week, the U.S. abstained from a United Nations Security Council vote calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, which allowed the measure to pass. Netanyahu quickly canceled plans for a delegation to come to Washington, which President Biden had requested to try and dissuade Israel from carrying out a military operation in Rafah. Netanyahu claimed failure to veto. Uh, the U.N. measure was a change by the U.S. from its previous position. Take a listen. It does not represent a change at all in our policy. It's very consistent with everything that we've been saying we want to get done here. And we get to decide what our policy is. The prime minister's office seems to be indicating through public statements that we somehow changed here. We haven't. And we get to decide what, uh, what our policy is. But now Netanyahu has decided to send two top officials to Washington, D.C. for talks as early as next week. Joining us now is former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and the George W. Bush administration, John Bolton, who also served as National Security Advisor under Donald Trump. Good morning to you and thank you for coming on the show. Uh, when we hear the things now being said in public, how significant is the strain in the relationship behind the scenes, despite this kind of change of heart from Netanyahu to send a delegation here? Um, the, found, the cracks in the foundation seem to be getting wider. Well, I think there's enormous uh, strain and tension between uh, Washington and Jerusalem. I think, uh, in particular, the Israelis have been under enormous pressure from Washington uh, on the campaign in the Gaza Strip. And notwithstanding what the press spokesman said, the, the abstention on Monday on the Security Council resolution was, in fact, a shift. And recognized by, by others like uh, French uh, President Emmanuel Macron, uh, the fact is that the resolution that we abstained on did not contain a condemnation of Hamas and did not contain an explicit linkage between a ceasefire in Gaza and Hamas's release of the hostages. So personally, I think it was a mistake not to veto that resolution, but the Israelis are correct here that it did represent a change in U.S. policy. Mm. And I'm curious, you well know that <clears throat> Biden, in, now that we're neck deep in, in election season, is facing some protest vote back here at home from uh, Muslim Americans who feel like he's been too aligned uh, with Israel, and certainly he's worried about politics heading in, into November. But I'm just curious about what you know and what you believe to be President Trump's position on Israel because he seems even more aligned with Netanyahu. So I'm just I'm trying to understand what Muslim Americans who are upset with Biden what they expect Trump to do differently because he, he would seem to me to be even more aligned with the current prime minister. Well, I think you're correct to say that Biden is trying to navigate through a real political minefield here in the United States for him and unfortunately what that has done is make our foreign policy more incoherent may make sense domestically for him, but internationally it, it's, it's confused things and, and strained relations with Israel. Uh, Trump has been, uh, particularly for Trump, relatively silent on this conflict. What he has said in the past couple of weeks, uh, essentially directed at Israel, is you need to finish this war uh, because it's damaging your inter international uh, reputation. Now, that's somewhat ambiguous because he could mean finish Hamas off, that's one way to finish the war, or just stop the hostilities. But I think it would be a mistake for anybody to think that if Trump were reelected in a second term, he would be as pro-Israel as he seemed to be in the first term. He's very transactional, he doesn't have a philosophy, he doesn't follow ordinary lines of policy analysis, and I, I think these somewhat ambiguous comments on Israel in the past few weeks indicate he's not as sympathetic uh, to Israel, at least in the current circumstances, as, as one might have expected based on his first term statements. It's just hard to imagine him being sympathetic to the Muslim community when this is a man who wanted a Muslim ban. Well, let's let's be clear. Donald Trump is sympathetic to Donald Trump. That's who he's sympathetic to first and foremost. Uh, and I think what he's trying to do is, is avoid what he sees as potential damage to Israel reputationally rubbing off on him uh, because that's, that's his highest priority to, to 
uh, keep himself politically viable. So I think his silence really speaks louder than his words. Uh, he doesn't want to defend Israel in the present circumstances, and he's and he's doing his best not to. So with all that being said, um, how, how then does uh, President Biden walk this line? Rob mentioned the hundreds of thousands of protest vote in a major swing state. Um, he has to please the international audience, right, and those international relationships, but domestically also has to take care of his uh, reputation here as well. So how does he walk that line in an election year with so much at stake where we have had guests on the show who have said, you know, um, Arab Americans that, uh, that they have spoken to have said, I would rather penalize Biden and not vote for him and protest in that way and just deal with four years of President Trump. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to vote for either Trump or Biden. Let me make that clear. I, I don't understand that line of thinking on, on the part of those people, but but obviously that's up to them. Uh, what, what we should focus on in Gaza really is who is morally responsible for, for the plight of the Palestinian people. The, the conventional wisdom is to blame it on Israel, but, but I think that's unfair. I think it's Hamas that is using the entire Gaza Strip as a human shield. I mean, that's about as callous and barbaric an approach uh, as I can imagine. But they're using civilians to protect themselves from being uh, effectively eliminated by Israel. And that constitutes a terrorist veto over Israel's right to self-defense. Uh, I think we should have enormous sympathy for these people in Gaza who are now homeless in very difficult conditions. But the responsibility lies with Hamas and, and their utter callousness in the way they treat their own people. Do you foresee any hope at all of this long discussed two state solution ever becoming reality? Uh, I, I don't, and I, frankly, I thought the two state solution was dead before October the 7th, and if it wasn't dead before then, it certainly is dead now. You know, the Palestinian people have been victimized for a long time, beginning in the 1950s and 60s by other Arab states that, that weaponized them as uh, against Israel to be part of the wedge that drove Israel into the sea. And, and that obviously is not going to happen. But the, the Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank are still treated as refugees. Uh, and what, they, what the most humane thing to do for them that would give them uh, the best chance for a future and a viable economy with their families is resettlement into a viable economy. And nobody seems to want to do it. The Egyptians don't want to do it. The Jordanians don't want to do it. Uh, it obviously, they're not going back into Israel. And once again, uh, we, we may come to the end of this the military phase of this struggle and still not have an answer as to what the future for the Palestinians is. And just in 20 seconds, your reaction to Senator Schumer's call for new elections, which was an extraordinary moment for the highest ranking uh, Jewish American elected uh, office holder in this country to essentially call for Netanyahu to, to leave the stage. You know, it was stunning. You're right about that. I, I think it was a mistake on Schumer's part. I think it's backfired. It certainly has not hurt Netanyahu in Israel. And I think there's an argument that uh, the people have actually come to support him because they think it's unfair for U.S. officials to tell Israel what to do in that respect on their domestic politics. All right, Ambassador John Bolton, as always, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Glad to be with you. Jay.